Hey, what's up, Rattlers? So, you know Clint, and you know Brian, and you're about to meet Don, who works with these amazing... <laughs> Look at these guys. Yes. Look at them go. Oh, my <laughs> God, those are just awesome. <laughs> yeah, Brian's having a little bit of trouble with these guys. They're flopping all over the place. But, wow, that is a mess of garter snakes. So obviously this is going to be a garter snake episode. Garter snakes are one of my favorite snakes. I know that I say every snake is my favorite in every one of my videos. It's true. Every snake is my favorite snake. But this is going to be a garter snake episode. I am here at Don Belknap's place in Salt Lake City, Utah, and he is going to show off some of his amazing garter snakes. I'm Dave Kaufman, and these are my reptile adventures. At Rainbow Mealworms, we grow all our insects 100% naturally so that you get the freshest, most lively feeders on the market. So for all your reptile food needs, place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net. All right, so Dom, what are, we, what are we looking at there? That is incredible. This is a super pastel granite checkered garter. This one's a little odd with the uh, like leopard spotting on the neck. Yeah. So now how rare is this morph? It's, it's pretty rare right now. There's not a lot of people that have the uh, the granite morph. That is one good looking Marcianus. So obviously you bred these, and what were the parents? Um, both were just super pastel um, heads for granite. This is a young adult female, a super pastel checkered. Wow, you know, I love Marcianus. I love the checkered garter snakes. But then when you see, you know, some of the morphs that we can create with these things, man, I just love them even more. What does the super pastel do to the phenotype? Uh, it makes them a whole lot lighter. All right, so that is what the checkers normally look like. So obviously this one has a lot of hats to it. This is hat for the, the fully melanistic. It's a new one. Mm. Oh. Do you have any of the visual melanistics? I do. I do. You do? <laughs> well, unfortunately, we don't have time in this video to see them. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one I can't wait for, too. The male's doing better than the female. She decided to go off feed, but... So this is the melanistic. So this is a new line of melanistic, you said? Yes. A guy named Josh Foley found the original one. Uh, it was bred to a normal, and uh, it passed away. Um, this guy in Texas messaged me. He got three of the hats, bred them, and produced. He wanted to work with somebody who had some experience to get this line. Wow. Into the hobby. So he has that really kind of jet black head, and the yeah. tongue is jet black, and he's got a jet black belly. Look at that. That is, wow. That is a really interesting snake. Look at this. Don, what do you uh, what do you think about the idea that gutters might have a species-specific venom to fish? I... About that? We, we were actually talking about that in the car on yeah. the way over here. I, I don't know about with the fish, but I know with the wandering garter the, that's out here, they... They have their saliva. They have the Devornois gland. Um, their saliva acts like a tranquilizer with the with mice. Because I've I've I I wondered about that years ago. I didn't when I was before I really got into the hobby. Um, I had one eat a live mouse. I'm like, how did you? What's going on? How can you just eat this mouse? It's just laying there. And you know, after getting the hobby and the internet and having access to all the information out there, I, I read about it. I was like, oh, okay. And it does. It, it you know the wanderings up here are known for eating eating voles and mice and stuff like that. So it helps them, you know, as they're biting and you know just trying to eat the mouse. It helps calm them. Down. It just kind of tranquilizes them. Some people have had like itching from a bite, but that's it's pretty rare. So can we talk a little bit about uh, you know how you basically keep garters? I mean they're so easy to keep. Basically tubs with hide that's, boxes or yeah because I have so many. I mean. I use I, I use the Sterilite tubs. Um, we've tried different tubs over the years, and the Sterilite have locking lids, which is key to <laughs> but with garter garters, snakes. Yeah. They are. Uh, I think uh, they taught Houdini his tricks. <laughs> That's right. My, my first reptile so, I ever had was a garter, and I put it in a jar with no lid on my porch during dinner, and came back. It was over. So I didn't have that snake anymore. It's oh. unbelievable. Oh. So Marcy, so Thamnophis marcianus is the scientific name of the checkered garter. Just want to make that Ooh. perfectly clear. But that's what it looks like as an albino. That is amazing. She doesn't look anywhere near as striking in that container. You get her out, and those purples and yellows oh, yeah. just explode. She's got she's got the the coloration of a hatchling banana ball python. Except she's an adult. Absolutely. And she's kept it. Absolutely. That Look is at those. Unbelievable. Here, come here, sweetheart. 
Look at those subtle colors on her head. Those yellows and oranges and lavenders. Yeah, I love that. That is amazing. That is an amazing snake. But yeah, I mean, colubrids are just gaining in popularity mm. more and more right now. And so, wow, so these have, these have really increased in price. They, they've gone up a bit, yeah. Um, there's not as many breeders. Um, and this one, the, the albinos, I guess they were found in the late 90s. Right. So there's not been a lot of outcrossing done either. Right, we need more people working with these and outcrossing these to strengthen them. All right, so this is uh, another pastel, correct? Yes, this is the mother of the babies I showed you. Oh, fantastic. I love head those head. head markings. Yeah, a lot of times, yeah, some of these, some of the babies have some really unique head markings. Yeah, I just love those really unique colors that these have. And that head pattern is something else. Well, that black stripe under the eye is quite impressive. Would you say that that's, um, how can I say this, stinking rad? Oh, absolutely. That's <laughs> totally bodacious. <laughs> 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 All right, so the, you know, the checkers are a really incredible garter snake, but my favorite garter snake, you don't have corona, do you? No. All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, my favorite garter snake are the plains garter snakes, and so I understand that you work with Quite a bit. Of, oh, are you pressed I do have, have no. I was just <laughs> that the light kicked off, and I'm like, oh, oh. oh it's eight o'clock. I was like, that he might have knocked the timer off or something. Like, okay, oh, I got all night. Yeah. 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 Am I the cutting into your <laughs> Sopranos reruns? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so let's see some of your planes garters that I'm really looking forward to seeing here. Oh, well, let's start over if you could mess that. up at some point so I can record it, that'd be fantastic. Oh, <laughs> just stick around, buddy. <laughs> All right, so this is this is one that uh, Clint was looking at earlier. Yeah, this is a, she's a little orange albino. <clears throat> let's take her under the light and get a better look yes. at her. Oh, see now that is why I like Plains Gardens. Mm -hmm. I've been in love with these as long as I've known Don. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, I got these from actually Misty Anger up in Idaho. They're descendants of the uh, uh, the highbino that Scott Felzer had. Gotcha. The giant one with the neon orange stripe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're not quite as neon as that original. And the orange gene popped. I'm not sure where that popped out because he it was just typical Iowa looking albino when I got her. Yeah. Is that is that orange gene? Is that something that's separate from albino, or is it something that goes along with certain kind of albino? It it popped up uh, years ago in. Uh, because there's some red red face planes, and people outcrossed, and then the, um, it either they either turn red or orange. So where the orange came from, we're not exactly sure, but it popped up pretty nice. Wow, oh, I'll yeah. say, She's definitely one of our favorites here. It's just, it's just me. The, the forks on the tongues it's much bigger on these ones than on. I feel like the mm. forks on the the tongues are yeah, so the tongue garters are really, really yeah, really yeah. They do use scent a lot. They have good good eyesight I mean, too. Compared to, even compared to those others over there, I feel like the tongues on these are just so much broader than those other garters. That is gorgeous. Yes. This is the male that we're gonna breed with. It's the same genetics. It's the high bino. I'm not sure why they call it high bino because maybe the high orange. High bino the original is uh, hypo albino. So the two the two genes the two genes visibly coming out is they contracted it hypo albino high bino. Scott Felser named the original one because it had the neon orange stripe down the back, so I don't know. Wow. This is a plains out of Kansas. And yeah, look at that just flaming dorsal stripe. This is one of the reasons why I love planes. And look at that kind of greenish head. There's so much black in that one. It's incredible. Here, just yeah, get 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 right in there, Brian. Yeah, oh, I was yeah, I was yeah. out of your shots. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> I'll just film you filming the snake, filming the snake. <laughs> No, you get it on my shot. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling somebody today, because we caught a we caught a uh, wandering garter, and uh, it was just with with my wife's family, and I was like, we have the ugliest garters here in Utah. I was like, this is a great snake, but and, and they're, they're like, really? So I started showing them pictures just of wild type garters, and they were just wow. Yeah, right, right. Holy we have cow! Three here in Utah. Yeah, yeah, but the the wandering that. garters, which are the only ones I've ever seen here in Utah. <sighs> yeah. Oh, a xanthic. That is awesome. So we've got an xanthic plains. Look at that. Look at that kind of slate blue black head. So where where did this one originate from? Uh, we got this in a group from a guy out in New York that had him. He had this pair, and uh, so we brought him out to our fall expo. So we put them together to display, and 
this little boy was crawling all over the females courting him and uh, a month and a half later I'm pulling the girl out of the cage I'm like you're a little bit fat for between feedings here and start you know palpating you know you just in there and I'm like wait a minute and uh, she popped out 12 little I was hoping it was him and yeah 12 little black and white antics. Wow talk about a happy accident just, wow wait, 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 wait. so all of the offspring were exempted mm -hmm. and she's she is exempted as well or she? the female what yeah she was okay so they're both visual yeah they're okay both so it's it, cause it's probably I was a little confused it's probably obsessive, too, but yeah, yeah. yeah. So. I was like then it's dominant and he's a homo zygote right, right. <laughs> that's yeah. phenomenal right so this is a valley garter but that's a valley garter that is a locality from from Valley County, Idaho. Valley, so it's <laughs> Valley County, Valley Garter. Love it. And as Clint just said, you can tell this is a Valley Garter by the way that it talks. Well, of course, yes. totally. Gag me with a spoon. <laughs> 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 so that's that what the Valley spectrum. Garter snakes look like here in Utah. They've got like that nice little red, they almost look like a red-sided garter snake, but very different head than a red-sided garter snake. And these guys will sling poop and musk faster than any other garter. <laughs> the fastest poop slinger in the West. <laughs> yes. oh, there it is. <laughs> Ask right me show you. you. <laughs> oh, I just absolutely love when <laughs> snakes take direction. That is very <laughs> deeply satisfying. All right, so what have we got there? That Oop. is another wily, I anticipate you getting pooped valley. again. But look, yeah, another <laughs> valley, but look at that tail. That is just amazing. Dude, I love how it starts right after the vent. Yeah, it's right. Just literally just the tail. Yeah. See, this is why garter snakes are the most amazing snake in the world, other than bull snakes and ball pythons, other forms of pituophis, cobras, <laughs> rattlesnakes. What else? Gaboons, Basically any other species. Gaboons, <laughs> Brian. No, I'm not going to be. No, it's you. You do the jerk. <laughs> you, you're, the, you're the jerk today. I'll be a jerk tomorrow. Deal. But when you're starting, <laughs> <All right, yeah. laughs> starting to get awfully fragrant in here. That's the first yeah, one so. that's been really all that aromatic. That musk, the smell of that garter snake musk, man, that is like Drakkar to me anyway. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> Kelvin Klein's obsession. <laughs> I Yes, I, I, I do believe I'm going to start bottling up that musk as Herb or Cologne. <laughs> Don, will my, here. Don will be my solo customer. <laughs> yes, yes be supplier, chock I full of pheromones. <laughs> I love pitophis. Love them. Absolutely. But if you found a single pitophis with like the coloration of almost any of these garters, it'd be the most incredible thing you ever saw in your entire life. Couldn't agree more. So I don't know if I can put... I, it's hard to rank order them here. Next on Clint's Reptiles, hybridization between Pituophis and Thamnophis. Oh, is it the perfect pet snake? How hard can it be? There's your idea. Yep. All right, now, whoa. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. So this is a California red-sided garter snake. A snake that needs no introduction is one of the most beautiful snakes in the world. Wild type ball python you think is more beautiful than that? No. Okay. No. I, to be honest, <laughs> uh, you know, I can't think of a prettier snake than this. And even non-snake people will agree that this is one of the most beautiful snakes on the planet. You know what it is, man? You don't really get that red and blue in the same snake like that. That's right. Often. You've got some of the coral snakes, and then you've got the San Francisco garter, which I have decided, it took me way longer than it should have to even be able to distinguish between California red sided and San Francisco's. And after I could, I decided I might like the California red sided even better. I literally just decided that right now. I was just looking at that picture that San Francisco Oh, right for now. sure, for sure. Yeah. And, you know, I won't put this in the video, but um, did you know that... So I don't know if you knew that, Clint, but the public can't know about that. But That's the most incredible thing it's, I've ever heard. I mean, if... Learn something new every day. Right. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's, that's good. To it, is, it is the most important piece of information about garter snakes ever, and the public simply cannot know about it. I just, I feel like I might not ever be the same. Right. Like that changes right. everything. Absolutely. Not just about garters, but really about everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I really I wish that. that I could have told everybody about that. But but the fact that you said it really brings its validity into high question. Oh, quite, absolutely. Without question. Big question. Wait a minute. That's not, that's not good. <laughs> I just love those red tiger stripes with that kind of 
bluish dorsal stripe. But look at the belly. That slate gray blue belly. Oh, yep. so oh nicely. <laughs> he really Should loves the. Stay away from those guy. cans. <laughs> he hates these cans. <laughs> why am I not keeping a red sided car? Why, 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 why aren't you keeping these, Brian? I don't know. Oh, oh, that was so awesome. Yes, he saw you and reacted. Oh, it's windsock time. You oh yeah, down. he's going after the he's going after the dead cat yeah, on the microphone. Oh, God, and there he goes. <laughs> Why am I not filming from this angle? I don't know. Oh, that is a thing. Brian, a writer writes, a YouTuber films. Man, when I saw you outside rubbing that frog all over that windsock, I didn't know what you were up to. Uh, premeditated, right there, baby. <laughs> all makes sense now. This is fantastic. All right, so let me give this back to you here. There we go. All right, so what else do we have? All right, so moving out of the United States down into Mexico, this is what the garters look like down there. This is this is a very unique looking garter snake. Is it just me or is it more short and stocky? Yeah, it kind of is. She's really stocky for Lake Chapala garter. Yeah, that is, that is a very some nice... interesting garter. They have some nice blue. She's getting ready to shed, so it's not quite as bright. I actually like Mexican garters, and Mexican garters, you know, they're not very well known. And man, there's some there's some amazing garters down there that just people really aren't that familiar with. No, they're yeah. not real common. Right. So this is a Santa Cruz garter. This is one of a, a kind of a unique garter because it only has the dorsal stripe. It doesn't have the lateral stripes, and. It's just a really attractive garter snake. All right, so how old is this one? Uh, he's about two years now. Two years. This is an albino Lake Chapala garter, uh, produced by Stephen Bull in the Netherlands. Um, he had some no wild cots, and uh, out of nowhere, a litter popped out with uh, albinos. So he held back in his uh, bread and produced them. And right now, as far as I know, we have the only pair of albinos in the U.S. In the U.S. So. This one individual is one of two, and these are the only ones in North America. Yes. And Stephen, in the, I think he's in the Netherlands, has yes. the others. Yeah, I met him at the Italy Expo, I think. So where are these native to? Lake Chapala. I'm Chapala. not sure exactly where, but they're basically just, there's a number of the snake species, garters down there are just native to certain areas around just certain lakes. My favorite was the Zacapu, Lake Zacapu. I had a pair of those, really big, black, stocky, very little markings on them. So this is the rarest morph of garter snake in the country. Right now, yes. So, Don, I just want to thank you so much for having us out here. We flew all the way down here, went straight from the airport right to your place just to see your garter snakes. That is how excited we were to see your garter snakes. So thank you so much for sharing your collection with us. This is really amazing. Hey, so we were excited to have you out here. Uh, when you mentioned you're coming out, we we're just like, oh, right, the on. <laughs> right on, right on. Do you hear that? And we did hear you that. Yeah, you heard it. You heard it. Yep, yep. All right. <laughs> well, thanks again, my man. You bet. Thank you. All right, guys. So I'm going to put all of Don's contact information in the description below. Go and check it out if you're interested in garter snakes. This is the guy to talk to. So I want to thank Clint and Brian and Don for this really awesome episode. And until the next reptile adventure, love the planet and rattle on.